Hi, my name is Shalom Patel and I'm from Duke University. I'm also a developer for the Internet 2 Grouper project. This is the developers and architects track of the Grouper training. In this video, I'll be talking about how to design permissions. Here are the topics that I'll be covering. I'll give an introduction to describe permissions in Grouper. Then I'll talk about the various components that are involved in permissions, including permission definitions, permission names, actions, roles, assignments, limits, and inheritance. Then finally, I'll talk a bit about how to integrate permissions in Grouper with your applications. This is a slide from one of the introductory videos that basically expresses that there's a lot more to Grouper than just simple group management. Grouper has an extensive attribute framework that allows you to assign attributes to all sorts of objects, including groups, folders, members, memberships, and even other attribute assignments. This attribute framework is the basis for the permission management capabilities in Grouper. These capabilities allow you to manage the roles and permissions of an external application. A permission consists of three primary parts, a subject, an action, and a resource, uh, which I'll cover in more detail throughout this tutorial. A person can get a permission in multiple ways. The person may be in a role and that role has been given the permission directly, or a person may be given a permission directly um, as well though that permission has to be in the context of a role. The benefit of that is that the person will automatically lose the permission if that person is no longer in the role. Also, a person may get a permission indirectly through the various inher inheritance methods that exist in Grouper. And finally, just like groups, there's a flexible delegation model available in, uh, for permissions uh, which is possible because attributes are defined and created within the same folder hierarchy that exists in Grouper for groups. So the first step in building permissions in Grouper is to create a permission definition. There are many different types of uh, attribute definitions and one of them is for permissions. The permission definition uh, defines the resources and actions that can be used by permissions created using that permission definition. It also contains uh, security information such as who can create permission assignments using a given definition and who can see permission assignments. Uh, so just to be clear, a permission definition is not a permission but is needed to define resources and actions that can be then used to create permissions. As I go through these slides, I'll demo how to create the various components uh, using the Grouper UI. I'll work on a demo where permissions are created uh, for a service desk website to control access to uh, various pages. So here I'm in the light UI and um, I'm going to go ahead and create a permission definition. So I'll click on the create or edit attribute, um, new attribute definition. And I already created a folder for the service desk application that I'm um, working on here. So the folder is school colon engineering colon apps colon service desk app uh, and the permission definition name would go here. And the name of that is service desk app permission def. The type is permission. And permissions can be assigned to groups and um, memberships. Um, I'm only going to be assigning them to groups in this demo so I'll just click on uh, the groups option. And so then I'll go ahead and save that. And so now I have a permission definition. So that was a demo of creating permission definitions. Uh, the next step is to create permission names. Permission names are a type of attribute names uh, where the associated attribute definition has the type of uh, permission. These are objects created within the grouper namespace hierarchy um, just like attribute definitions. Uh, when thinking about this in terms of the permission triple, uh, this would be the resource. You typically have more than one permission name per permission definition. Uh, now I'll go back to the demo and create some uh, permission names. Uh, we'll assume that the website um, has just two pages a home page and a user information page where authorized people can see and possibly update user information. So 
So starting back at the, uh, the Light UI homepage, I'll click on Manage Attributes and Permissions. Uh, create or edit attribute names. Uh, new attribute name. And so here I'll search for the definition that I created previously. Um, the folder where the attribute name would get created. Uh, an ID. So there's going to be a home page. So that's one resource, the home page. And the next resource is going to be the user info page. And so now I have two permission names uh, in Grouper, which represents two resources for this given application. So that was a demo of creating permission names. Uh, next, we want to create some actions. Each permission definition can have a set of actions that can be used to form permissions using that definition. Uh, these actions are freeform strings. Our demo website will have two actions, a read action and an admin action. So now I'll go to the attribute definition uh, for this application. Uh, I'll click on the actions button and so I'll add a a read action and an admin action. And so that was a demo of creating actions. Uh, now we have roles next. Uh, so a role is a special type of group. Uh, so like groups, you can have a membership list associated with a role and you can delegate that out. Um, you can delegate out access to roles as far as who can see uh, memberships in that role and who can update memberships and so forth. But unlike groups, roles can be associated directly with permission assignments. Also, roles can have permission inheritance, which I'll talk uh, in, bit, in a bit more detail later on. So now I'm going to create a couple of roles for this demo application. I'll go to the Light UI home again. I'll click on Groups, Roles, and Local Entities, and I'll create a new one. So I'll create it in the same folder. So I'm going to create a Tier 1 Service Desk role. Um, and the purpose of this role is to have limited um, capabilities within the application. And I create a tier two service desk role, uh, and this role would have um, more capabilities uh, in the application. So that was a demo of creating roles. Now we finally get to the point of creating permission assignments. Uh, this is where the permission triple comes into play. The subject is either a role or a specific subject within a role. Uh, the latter is useful when you only want some people in a role to have a permission, but you want to make sure that if those people drop out of the role, then they lose the permission automatically. The action is the freeform string, such as admin or read, and the resource is the permission name, which in my demo has been home page uh, and user info page. Uh, note that the permissions can also have a start and end date associated with them. So a permission can start on a future date and also end on a future date if you want. Permission assignments can either be allowed permissions or disallowed permissions. With an allowed permission, you are saying that a subject can perform some action on a resource. With a disallowed permission, you are saying that a subject cannot perform some action on a resource. If a subject does not have a particular allowed permission, then creating a disallowed permission for that subject is not needed to deny that permission, given that the default behavior is that you won't have a permission unless granted one. But disallowed permissions are useful if, uh, for instance, you have a set of allowed permissions that have a few exceptions where it's easier to add disallowed permissions on the exceptions rather than creating allowed permissions that would exclude the exceptions. A simple example would be 
uh, that a role is given a permission, but one person that happens to be in the role shouldn't have the permission. So that person is in the con so that person in the context of the role would get a disallowed permission. When you deal with all the inheritance involved in permissions, you can easily get conflicts. The permission processor has an algorithm to compute and resolve permission conflicts when performing queries. Uh, here on this slide, I have a summary of the algorithm, uh, but there's more detail on the wiki. But basically, direct assignments trump indirect assignments, and a lower depth inherent assignment trumps a higher de depth uh, inherent assignment. And inherited allow and disallow assignments at the same depth will yield and allow. When I created the tier 2 service desk um, group, I actually created it as a group instead of a role. So I'm going to go switch that from a group to a role. So here it was a group before, now it's a role, and I'll save that. So now I want to create two permission assignments. Um, they're going to be role-based assignments. Uh, the permission definition is going to be uh, the one that I've created for this application. Uh, and the, the two assignments that I'm going to create are, uh, well, the first one is going to be that the Tier 1 service desk role will have read on the user info page. And the second is going to be that the tier two service desk role is going to have admin on the user info page. Uh, so I'll find the user info page resource. The tier one service desk is going to get read. And this is going to be an allowed. And now I'll create the second permission. Same resource, the user info page. Uh, the role is going to be the tier 2 service desk and they're going to get admin. So now if I go to an SQL browser and query one of the views, um, which I'll talk about in more detail later on, um, you can see the permissions that have been set up so far. So here the tier 1 service desk has read on the user info page and the tier 2 service desk has admin on the user info page. So the next thing are uh, limits. Uh, limits are runtime constraints on permission assignments. There are many built-in limits in the core grouper code such as weekday 9 to 5, uh, but it's a pluggable interface so your grouper admin can add custom limits if they want. Uh, so when you query permissions, you can supply limit values such as the time. And if the permission has uh, the weekday 9 to 5 limit, uh, then you'll only get a true response back if the subject has a permission and the time is within the restriction. And note that limits only apply to allowed permissions. Next we have inheritance. Uh, so there are different types of inheritance uh, that you can have in Grouper. The first is role inheritance, um, where one role inherit, inherits uh, the permissions of another role. Uh, so I'll do a quick demo of that. So what I'm going to do is create a service desk manager role and have it so that that role will inherit the permissions of the tier 2 service desk role. So I'll go to the groups roles and entity screen, uh, click on the button for a new role. I'll put it under the same folder. Uh, this will be the service desk manager role. I'll click role uh, so it gets defined as a role, not a group. Then I'll give the same name and save that. And so now I can go to the, go to the role inheritance um, screen and search for the tier 2 service desk role and have it so that um, that that role is implied by the service desk manager role. And so now if I go back to the um, SQL browser and do a refresh there, you can see that the service desk manager um, role has admin on the user info page 
And that happens because the tier 2 service desk has admin on the user info page. You can also have a uh, resource inheritance uh, where a permission on one resource implies that you have permission on another resource. Um, and I'll also do a quick demo of that um, where we're basically going to make it so that if you have a permission on the user info page, then you also have uh, the permission on the home page. And so here I'm going to do a search for the user info page. And I'll go to the inheritance and then search for the home page resource. And then click on the button add attribute name applied by user info page. And so now that relationship has been added. And now if I go back to the SQL query browser and do a refresh, uh, you can see now the Service Desk Manager has admin on both the home page and the user info page. The tier one service desk has read on both pages, and the tier two service desk has admin on both pages. Next, there's action inheritance, where one action implies another. Um, so for instance, you could have it so that admin implies read. And again, I'll do a quick demo of that. So back in the light UI, I'm going to find the attribute definition so I can look at its actions. And so now down here, I can click on actions. Um, I can click on the um, admin action uh, to edit. And now here I can say that uh, that the read action is implied by uh, the admin action. And save that. Now again if I go to the SQL uh, query browser you can see that the uh, service desk manager can now read and admin both the user uh, info page and the home page. Uh, the tier 1 service desk can read both pages and the tier 2 service desk can read and admin both pages. And the, um, the last inheritance uh, is based on group membership. Uh, so if a role is assigned a permission then any subjects that are added as members of the role will get that permission. And those subjects can be other groups, uh, so you can form indirect permissions that way too. Now I'll spend a bit of time talking about how you can integrate the role and permission management capabilities in Grouper with your applications. Uh, there are a few options. The first option is to use the Grouper changelog to propagate permissions to an external application. Changelog events in Grouper uh, will occur when permissions are added or dropped, and these are for both indirect and direct uh, permissions. Although the changelog doesn't record uh, the permission triple involved for performance reasons, instead it'll record which roles have had permission changes. The changelog category is, is permission, and the changelog action is permission change on role. It's expected that the application will see that a role has had permission changes and then query Grouper for all permissions involved in that role and perform a sync with the application. The next approach is for the application to look up permissions in Grouper in real time using Grouper web services. So in this case, when a user goes to some protected resource, at that time the application would query Grouper to see if that user should have access or not. Uh, this is a possible approach for custom applications where you can control how the application deals with permissions. You probably need to consider caching if in the application, especially if permissions are very fine-grained. And as part of the queries that are made, 
Uh, you can also assign limit values. The next approach is to use views and grouper. Uh, these are useful for read-only queries where the permission processor is not needed. So if you use disallow permissions or limits, you probably wouldn't want to use this approach. The grouper underscore perms underscore assigned underscore role underscore v view shows all the permissions assigned uh, to roles. And this is the view that I was looking at as part of the demo. The grouper underscore perms underscore role underscore v view shows all the permissions assigned to users due to the users being in a role and the role being assigned the permission. The grouper underscore perms underscore role underscore subject underscore v uh, view shows all the permissions assigned to users directly while in a role. And finally, the grouper underscore perms underscore all underscore v view is a union of the last two. If you simply want to see if a, per if a person has a permission, you would probably use the last view. Um, and finally, the last approach to integrate permissions with your applications is to use the grouper API. Though this is often not the best approach for applications uh, because the application would get full read-write access to the grouper data. Uh, instead, the web service option is often a better approach. So that's all for this tutorial. Uh, you can click on the quiz link in the video description to reinforce your knowledge of designing permissions. And here are some links you can visit uh, for more information. Thanks.